Peace, y'all. Peace, love, love, love. <laughs> I gave it to y'all three times today. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? How's your flow? How's your week going so far? We are in for another Tuesday tea. Nice, calm, slow vibe today. Um, I want y'all to check out the tea, though. Get into this tea, though. This is Plant Based Bay. This is my brand. Although now I have changed it to Plant Based Goddess. So if you still want the Bay, I can do that for you. But it's on my website. You all check out my website, Comedic Arts 24. Space. It's in my bio. Plant Based. I changed it to say Goddess, but this one says Bay. But if you want Bay, link me and I'll, I'll do that. And I'll change that for you. I should put both of them up anyway. But I have plenty of tea, little cute little crop tops. Um, I have my tea mugs. Today I am sipping on Ostra and Spearmint today. Little tummy, tummy health. Take care of the belly today. We're gonna talk about self-care. We're gonna talk about how we take care of ourselves from the physical to the mental to the spiritual. <laughs> Y'all know how we do. Peace, love, love. We gonna get my sister on here. My sister is in Charleston, South Carolina. Magnolia honey, darling Drew Sana. We gonna get her on here. Peace. Peace, Yogi. Peace, Forcey Yogi. What's your name? Holler at me. What you drinking? What you sipping on? Got it, Netheru. Yes, Netheru's popping in the building. Y'all coming to the table to sip? Peace, peace, peace. All right. So we are going to get Drew on here to sit with us and talk about all the things and discuss a little bit about what she, the works that she does in South Carolina. Peace, loves. Peace, peace, peace. All right, <laughs> I'll wait on you, we here. <laughs> so yeah, so just, if y'all didn't see, I got, got my little t tank on, my little crop top. This one says plant-based bae, but we got some that says plant-based goddess on there. I had to like, you know, had to go do do a little bit of both. You know, sometimes we want to be bae, sometimes we want to be goddess. But we always goddess though. <laughs> so peace. All right, so yeah, so we're going to get into the vibe of you will um, ask to join. It should be on the at the bottom. Yes, get your crop top. The link is in the bio. Bio Comedic Arts Twenty Four dot space. Missing my my words here. Comedic Arts Twenty Four dot space. The link is in the bio. We have the cups. Yes, this is the Myotic Flow cup tea cup. Do you see it, sis? Can you get on? Can you ask to join? Because I don't know if I can bring you in without being asked. Let me see. Oop, 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 oop. Okay. Are you still on here? And I, I guess I can ask. Um, I can figure it out. But yes, love, love. I'm so glad y'all here. What y'all sipping on? Y'all got some, y'all got your tea. Y'all ready for this tea? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about self-care today. We're gonna talk about taking care of our body, taking care of our mental and our spiritual. I um am just gonna get into talking about the physical, right? So, you know, late 30s, you know, things happen to this this um beautiful me package that we wear, right? <laughs> So we have to, I'm just like really being mindful of how we have to take care of ourselves. Um, and what that looks like now in our late 30s, right? Or however old you are. Really, it's just start on early in the life. So I just came from the dentist. Um, yeah, we got all the issues with the teeth. And it's not from like the sweets because I've really toned that down a lot in, in my years. I've really never really been a sweets person unless it's like, you know, the, the the delicious desserts of like cakes and stuff like that. But that's very far in in between because I'm very careful about my sugars. Okay, I'm going to ask. I got you. I don't know why it says I'm able to join. Are you, um, I don't know, sis. What's going on? It says I'm able to join. Oh, you're private. I wonder if that's why. Let's see. We're trying to get my sister on here, but it says unable to join. Because I can't request it either. I might have to go back, go out and come back in. So I can get you on here. But yeah, so I um, was talking about keep trying, love. Keep trying. We'll figure it out. Um, 
talking about this physical, right? Talking about this body. Um, so yeah, so one of the issues that I've had with my teeth is um, lack of calcium and lack of vitamin D. Um, especially now, well, I've been plant-based for, um, shoot, I've been plant-based for over a decade. Um, so I would go in between, um, I would go in between vegetarian to pescatarian to vegan um, for the last 10, day, 10, 10 days, 10 years. Um, so I have, you know, I do the wellness book list and I've really studied um, with the nutrition and getting our, make sure we have our minerals and vitamins. But, you know, we get, we get really, you know, comfortable. Um, especially shopping for in the grocery stores, it can become difficult really identifying what are mineral nutrient rich resources for our food. Um, and so it wasn't until like the last couple of years that I noticed that I've had some vitamin D deficiencies. Um, you know, I noticed in my teeth, I noticed in my body, um, I noticed in different, in different parts, in different, different ways, you know, sleep, vitamin D, lack of vitamin D, you're going to have, um, issues with sleep. Um, you're going to have issues with your, eventually your bones. You're going to have issues with, um, a lot of times it does cause like, um, depression and anxiety and things like that as well. But when you don't have the vitamin D, you're not able to absorb the calcium properly either. Um, so that is what my body was lacking. So I could feel it in my bones and in my teeth. Um, so taking care of ourselves. And I know that's one of the things that we, you know, we, we are lack on, you know, we, don't we always think every part of our body is going to last forever <laughs> and we don't do the regular maintenance on our body that we need to um so you know the exercise is good you know we're supposed to exercise doing the exercise doing the, the 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 yoga the stretching taking care of the mental all of that stuff you know making sure we are eating proper diets plant-based diets making sure that we are there we go making sure that we are taking care of ourselves right um so we gotta, we have to also pay attention to our body, pay attention to the different parts of our body that gonna, that's gonna need um, additional care. So, you know, now I gotta spend that change to get my get my teeth fixed, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and that also like, oh my goodness, like dental care. I am just, oh, I'm just like, insurance is just such a scam in itself. It's just you know living in this cap capitalist society. It just is what it is. So, all right, sis. I see you. I see you. Waiting on sis to join. We're trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, we have to do what we need to. You know, I mean, if you don't want to spend the money on it early on, um, it's best to start taking take care of yourself so you don't have to spend money on it later on. <laughs> so, making sure that you are, you know, eating, eating, you know, taking your your minerals and your vitamins um early on i don't know what's going on it won't let her get on here it won't let us be great what the heck i might have to get off and come back on this is so weird i'm like did i do something to block it um yeah so that's one of the things that i'm dealing with so you know taking care of that as well and just um you know, don't want to have to. There you go. <laughs> the worst. I thought Hold I was about to talk about my teeth the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, this is the. I have no idea why I wasn't able to get on. I don't either. I'm just saying they weren't trying to let us be great. That's all. You sideways, though, love. I'm sideways. Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right. Peace. The beautiful, Ooh. beautiful Justana. Hi. Y'all see, I posted a picture, but she did my makeup. I tried to do a little bit. Can you tell? I tried to do a little bit of something. Yes, I see you. I see you. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yes, I was like, I'm going to try something with a little bit of something I got. So, yes, thank you for that. It was beautiful. I got so many compliments for both of did us. You? It was blowing us up. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's yes. Awesome. So how how are you? How was your um? You were, I know you were up here with us yesterday. How was everything? How was your drive? How was you settle back in? It was a long drive home because mm -hmm. I got to a little sleep the night before, but um, but it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was happy that I could come out and be with y'all. You know, yeah, with the girl. 
Thank you, mm -hmm. for that. Yes, yes. Sister came up yeah. for our grand opening of Noir Collective. Um, so you all can follow that as well. That's a collective here where we have, we have, yeah, we we have businesses, black businesses in the building, um, and artists, and from regional and local areas. So trying to trying to do some things here, shift shift mm -hmm. the everything, shift wealth, shift shift representation, shift. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fabulous. I got some goodies, you know. Yes. That I brought back with me, so. Yeah. Excited. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was talking about my teeth because I just came yeah. from the dentist. So yesterday, after the um the opening, I went home like migraine sick because mm -mm. I have had this cavity that I have not taken care of. And I'm like, oh, I'll just, oh, I'll just, you know how we do. And yeah. um, yeah, so it just gotten so bad to where now it's like deep in the nerve. And so I had to rush to the to the dentist today. And now it's gonna, you know, cause me a a, a chain. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, um, yeah, I'm just talking. What did they do? Best to went. take care of ourselves. What did they do when you went? They went. Um, you know, they just did the whole x-ray and, you know, asked me, you know, how long I've had the, the pain and issue and did the sensitivity check. And it's like, it's super sensitive. And so he showed yeah. me where, you know, it was like, you know, just bad. It's just bad. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to affect the other teeth. So, you know, this is one wow. of those things. Um, I was talking about how I know that um, that's because of my diet, um, but not in the sense where my diet is bad, but it's because um, just making sure we have to have take our supplements as well, like our mineral rich vitamins and minerals, um, and especially being vegetarian, vegan. Um, I mean, yeah. especially being meat based, period, because the foods just aren't what they used to, you know, the, yeah. because the ground isn't what it used to. So we have to, you know, make sure we get those minerals and vitamins, you know, and take yeah. care of ourselves. Yeah take care of our bodies, our beings, yes. um, because this is the only one we got in this lifetime. So I think that's also part of us, you know, reclaiming, <laughs> reclaiming ourselves and um, in, this, in this black body is, you know, being mindful. We've talked a lot about mental health this year, um, but also, you know, talk about our, our physical being and our physical body as well, you know, not yeah, for sure. shortening our life, you know. Um, so yeah, so what are some ways that you are physically taking care of yourself these days? So um, so one of the things, I'm definitely big on supplements. Mm -hmm. I um, After having Inanna, well, she's six now, I suffered postpartum depression. And um, because I was like, I had insomnia all the time, mm -hmm. I did a lot of research around um, what had happened with my body. And so I was really experiencing adrenal fatigue, which I think so many of us experience, but it's really not talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and through my research, so I went to an um, uh, I went to someone who does acupuncture first. It was really like putting all of these pieces together. And then I went to a holistic psychologist who herself had suffered from adrenal fatigue. And then I finally landed at um, a really good gynecologist. But um, what I learned about adrenal fatigue is it's something that our bodies are basically, it's just stress, which is why so many of us have it and don't know it. And I had just finished undergraduate study and got pregnant right after that. And so my body was just completely, you know, it was just void of so much. Um, but what I learned is for women in particular, magnesium and vitamin D3 are really, really important. And I learned that like with um, postpartum depression, I never really, like, I have three children, right? With my other children, I didn't really experience that. And so I really didn't, you know, so much of what we know is by experience, right? So I really didn't believe it, honestly. And then when I got it and finally made my way, finally got to a gynecologist who, was, who looked at my hormone levels, I had no progesterone. And so then I learned about the relationship between magnesium, vitamin D, and progesterone because your progesterone there'll be no more receptors if you're, if you're low in your vitamin C and your D3. It's like, and so with no progesterone, you can't sleep, you are depressed. Mm -hmm. um, you wake up with your heart racing, so your, your adrenaline's going all the time, hence adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. 
it's just a terrible way to be. So um, I got really, really sick. Um, I learned a lot about my body. Um, and so now I'm really diligent about um, my supplements for sure. My D3 every morning, especially even this time of COVID, um, D3 is really important because we really don't absorb any enough sun. Mm -hmm. um, so I take my D3, I take iron um, just because I do eat meat. But um, I was anemic last time I went to my doctor, so I take a low dose iron every day. Um, a, a, I take a complex B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like um, this vitamin B, right? And I sleep. Like, I am diligent about my sleep. That's why I was like kind of, that's why getting home yesterday was so hard for me. I just turned 43, and I just understand like my body needs rest. I think we always need rest no matter what our age is, but we live in a culture that says, oh, while you're sleeping, I'm grinding, right? Like that, that really um, make uh, machines out of our body, this mm -hmm. capitalist society that expects mm -hmm. that we should always be producing, that our bodies are here to produce as opposed to having bodies to be, right? And so um, I'm acutely aware of that right now, um, how important it is that I get in the bed, whether I'm sleeping or not, that I'm probably gonna be in the bed around nine or 9.30. I, I read every single night, I've done that since I was a little girl. Um, I turn the lights out and you know I go to sleep to like something meditative usually. And I sleep until my puppies wake me up at like seven. Yes. And, and I'm a morning person now too. Like, you know, I, um, that was another thing about the adrenal fatigue was studying in undergrad, staying up at night. Like that just, I just couldn't function. So functioning, try not function off five hours of sleep, get up, get my kids ready, go to work, come home, do the same thing again. It was just way too much. Yeah. So um, those are some of the things I do to take care of my body. Uh, yoga I've done for years. Um, so yes, definitely back into that um, as often as possible. Yeah. So. Yes, that sleep is important. I know one of the things that... Um, I've seen recently the elder, one of the elder babas was talking about um, how we over overestimate or over really overcompensate for um, for sleep because we think that we're supposed to get, you know, eight, 12 hours, however much amount of sleep. But sometimes that can also be harmful. Um, so one of the things that I've consciously been doing for myself is asking the body to rest because sleep is not enough and a lot of times you're going like i said too deep into sleep and your body is still not being able to rest and that's also taking care of yourself as far as like i love your just you saying your nighttime ritual just immediately gave me calm because that mm -hmm. is part of it too it's like you know getting your body used to winding down a lot of times we jumping from you know the nine to five taking cute kids da -da -da, or whatever it is we're doing to the day and now we think that we're going to just jump into bed and be able to go to sleep so there has yeah. to be this wind down period of, um, you know, making sure that we are shutting the mind off. We are, you know, examining what the body feels like, you know, and, and doing all of those things to kind of get ourselves into that restful place. So, yeah, that's one of the things that I've been try consciously even telling myself. I've been doing a lot more of those rituals, but telling myself, we're just going to rest. We're, we we, we mm -hmm. need rest because we want to feel replenished in the morning and ready to go. And I feel yeah. like, oh my gosh, I slept so hard and so deep and I'm still tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's that's beautiful. I'm, I, yeah, and taking those vitamins um, and minerals is very important. I am not as consistent with that and I have not been. And I've been, and I've done my research around that. And a lot of, a lot of my, in the past, a lot of my reservation around that was just um, having those natural resources and where it was like, some of the supplements were just fillers. It wasn't even yeah. anything that was going to absorb in your body. So I, I try to be more mindful about what I'm eating, you know, um, to make sure that I'm having that in there. But now it's getting to the point where, yeah, I have to. Because like you said, we don't we don't get the, the the what we need from the sun. We don't get what we need from, you know, the, the nutrients in the earth. So now we have to, you know, take that and just, yeah, do our research around it. So it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. and even how it affects the mental right our mental health um yeah i had postpartum um mm -hmm. also didn't know it i had a lot of stuff going on i was um you know straight out of the military so i was already dealing with some ptsd from some stuff that i had going on there didn't know it i had had panic attacks for like 10 years mm. didn't know what they were until i'm having a random conversation with my mother 
and you know telling her about these heart palpitations and things that I was having, chest pains. And she's like, oh, it's panic attacks. Like, it was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, yeah, and the anxiety, you know, built up and, and that how that also depletes, you know, your body from, you know, in horm the hormones going up and down, trying to, you know, deal with the stress levels and everything. So yeah, yeah, it, it, it always goes hand in hand. Us taking care of our, our body um, affects our, our mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes, yeah, bringing that, that full circle into like what it looks like for us to be spiritually aware in that. Like, where's the awareness where we finally get to settle down? Like just before I was coming into this live, you know, I had been running all day and I just sat here just for a moment, just to feel my body, just to feel myself in this space. And that's something I'm grateful that we are, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, Sometimes I joke around and talk about, you know, COVID, some of the lessons that COVID has brought us, um, you know, with, with also being mindful of, you know, the, 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 also the trauma and the, you know, the things that have happened around it as well. But also noticing that it's, it's here because we asked for it. You know, it's That's here right. because, you know, we needed our humanity back. We needed to be able to, to feel ourselves again. We needed to be able to tap, feel each other again. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's one of the things that I think, although I have been just as busy in some ways, I think that I'm more mindful because now I have this lingering, you know, oh, COVID is out there. So, you know, we want to take care of ourselves staying out there. But um, that spiritual piece, I know you talked about the yoga. So what is what is your your whole spiritual practice awareness looks like? And how did you even get to that point? Mm hmm. So I found yoga, um, gosh, I was living in Alpharetta right outside of Atlanta. I think Isaiah might have been, how old was he? I don't know, like five or six. It was right before I got pregnant with Inanna and they're seven years apart, or Indigo, and they're seven years apart. Um, and there was a person that came to the apartment complex we lived at and gave, gave these classes on yoga. It's the most random thing that I wandered into. And um, and then I started attending a hot studio near the house, um, Bikram, like Bikram, like really, you know, um, consistent, the same kind of thing, the same kind of practice. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like there was some Eastern European women. There was a really large Eastern European um, community. So um, I found yoga that way. And then when I moved here back to Charleston from Atlanta, oh, my gosh, um, navigating multiple multiple changes um some of which included for sure emerging from an experience of trauma that happened around the same time that indigo was born like really just trying to find out find a way to um cope that was more sustainable because the way that i was coping with that trauma was not sustainable um and so what yoga offered me interestingly enough was a way to know myself differently um it was a way to swim within this is what I always say. I could swim within because the reality is my life is always going to be hella busy. I can't imagine any. Well, it'll change, right? That busyness right. will change or the type of work will change. Right. But what yoga does for me is it um, helps me to remember me. You know, it remember. And I mean that I'm, I'm talking about consciously, but I'm also talking about on a physical level to integrate, you know, to integrate my body. It's, it's like if I haven't done yoga in a long time, um, it's like getting a massage and all of a sudden I'm aware of my body again. Like, yeah. oh, there she is. Oh, oh, here I am. And so it's really my favorite thing to do next to taking a bath. And it's, um, it's one of the things that I struggle with doing as much as I need to. But I have created an office space. That's what I'm in right now. In the front room, um, Isaiah took all of his bed and whatnot back to Atlanta. So I've moved into this office yeah. space and I keep my yoga mat here. And I will have it laid out all day just to remember, you know, do yoga. Um, and I will also put it on my calendar because I'm realizing that I literally need to, um, I need to create, carve a space for that time. Um, it's something that I talk to other people about, in particular, like doing the kind of work we do as um, social activists, racial, you know, uh, folks that are um, advocating for racial justice um, in terms of, uh, being historical beings in the way that that work just weighs on our body, right? Along with our, our contemporary, like our experiences now, um, it is critical that we take care of ourselves. 
Otherwise, what I find is um, that it implodes again. And then we're finding, we're looking for all these ways to cope, right? Yep. Um, with what it's like to feel that. Because that work is not, that that's work of the spirit. That's work of the heart. Like that is not just, that's not necessarily just labor, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about transformation and practicing vulnerability in front of other people and holding space for what they're experiencing. So um, yeah, so yoga is literally one of my absolute favorite things to do. Um, in fact, I'm part of an organization right now as well, as you know, <laughs> and we are really looking at um, how we make the practice of yoga more inclusive, right? Because, um, because like many other things, it's been commodified. You know, and it's been um, um, snatched into spaces where all bodies aren't welcome mm -hmm. and all people aren't welcome. And so um, this idea of like mindfulness um, doesn't belong to a particular person or even a particular sect of the world, right? It belongs to all of us, uh, but we can't know it again. It's like, um, it's like me... Uh, experiencing dis-ease in my body, unease in my body. Like without experiencing it, I would not have known how to experience wholeness. Um, and so um, I feel like yoga is that way too. It's something we have to really experience. Mm -hmm. And what is there for us and what is there for us is different for everybody, right? Um, but for me, it um, integrates. It, it um, keeps me from a uh, brokenness that, that goes everywhere. It, I can contain my brokenness. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. it's everything. I tell, I tell everything. all the time, yoga, like, is my medicine, and it continues to save my life. And it's, again, like, I, and I heard you, and I feel myself in that, too. I've set up my space so that I can remind myself to practice, as well as, like, this is where I teach my sessions. But... It, it, it has now become one of those things where I say, it's, I put it in my pocket. So I carry it with me wherever yeah. I go. So I might be, you know, who knows where, <laughs> just move, doing some moves in order to expand into my body and to fill my body into that space and time. Um, and so it doesn't have to be something to where I'm like, okay, one o'clock every day, an hour where I'm on the mat, you know, <laughs> because uh -huh. my life is just not that structured right now. So I have to be able to take it everywhere I go. And then, Yes, the, the bringing the it gives me medicine, especially in this work, because it reminds me that yes, I have to take care of myself first, and also replenish and rejuvenate and like bring myself back um, when I'm dealing with the energy of other people. You know, I've I've you know counsel people now. I have a client who is doing really 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 deep work in the community, um, and he's you know beautiful black man and and just like doing everything you know in the family and this in this community and it's like bruh i get it but if you don't take care of yourself that's right that's it right like right. all all the things you've worked for is going to go go down with you you know because you have to you have to take care of yourself first you know it's, that's right it's, and 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 then not only and I talk about, we talk about, you know, this, this, this work that we do and we want it to be sustainable. And in order to do that, we have to be healthy for it to have longevity, right? Because if we think about any of our past leaders, you know, some of the ones that have been in this for, and, and been able to sustain it is because they've been able to sustain some level of, of health or some level, some level of, of, of space to where you'll see them pop in and out of the scene, you know, over several amount of years, because, you know, we need that as well. Always being involved and always being engaged is a drain on our energy. Like you said, it's this, it, you know, it's not just physical work, it's, it's heart work, it's, it's mental work, it's, you know, it's impacting our liver and our lungs and our like different organs, you know, and so we have to be able to, to bring ourselves back into this, into this body and into this oneness and, and really take mm -hmm. care of that. And yeah, when you were talking about, um, yeah, your, your children, I know we were talking about that yesterday and, and uh, how when we take care of ourselves, it also teaches them how to take care of ourselves. So I love it when I see my, you know, my son will say, you know, look, mom, I'm just going to stay home today. I'm just going to, you know, work out or I'm going to, you know, I'm having a self-care day or, you know, whatever that looks like for him. Um, being able, and I know that he gets that from 
you know, from watching me. You know, I will have my days where I'm saying, I'm, you know, I'm just going to take some time. I'm going to cut off the phone. I'm going to do whatever I need to do in order to get into that center of myself in that space. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's something that I don't know. I don't know it's, if it's something that I'm trying to think if it's something that I've seen my mother my mother do I, I talked about how I had I've always been in athletics or really like been not really girly but but the type of woman that likes to still take care of herself no matter what <laughs> so I wanted to I would do my you know facials and I would do get my nails done and do my pedicures and um and I think my mother took care of herself in other ways I think it was more of, of like that rest she always knew when to rest um you know when to take time away from for herself and so i'm not sure if that's something that i'm sure there's a piece of there that i learned from her but i think more of it i learned from just again like managing my own mental health and physical health and knowing that i just i'm not gonna run myself into the ground it's just something that i'm not gonna do um yeah so. yeah i think um when you speak about um, our mothers, I think um, my mother definitely took care of herself in ways um, like I remember, like that's the first makeup I ever played with was her makeup, mm -hmm. you know, her fashion fair and her clinic, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember her doing her hair and, and all of those things. And I remember that I definitely was that person. And I was a very serious athlete too, but I was definitely about, um, uh, curating beauty, you know, in whatever way. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I know that my girls see that. I mean, even my son, so good for him, whoever his partner ends up being, he's never going to be mad about her doing what she has to do to take care of herself, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, because, because these, these are things that they pick up. Right. And so like my daughter Indigo, she makes her mask, she does her toes, she soaks her feet, she puts her scrub on, she is very diligent about her self-care, Inanna. She gets in the mirror and does her little thing too. <laughs> um, and I feel like, um, I feel like so often, and it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily something that's really, really um, incredibly common in, in Black communities, but in general, like you see um, the mother disappear behind the daughter and we're not having that, you know, we're not, I'm not martyr. I'm not the martyr. I'm not going to be walking around dogged. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I'm not going to just put my daughter forward. Like, oh, here's the maiden, you know, you know, here's the maiden and, and she's, I'm going to give her all of this uh, because that would create something between us, you know? And so I think um, we can, we do that together or she'll do something. I'll be like, look at you or I'll do something. She'll be like, I like that, you know, let me think, you know? And so it's really, um, it's really affirming, uh, that, uh, that these bodies that are ours, we can care for, um, that these are, um, gifts, that these are sacred. And I do think like being an athlete, you know, in, in terms of like, again, getting back to kind of the, um, yoga also is like being an athlete. I played basketball, I ran trap, very, very serious. I feel like um, I met my body in a way there. You know, I met my power. And I love watching, um, like my daughter, she's an athlete too. And I love watching her just over the last few years, like her also kind of contacting that power in her body mm -hmm. and knowing it's there. I think it's one of the most amazing things about um, women being athletes is like mm -hmm. knowing that their body is more than a machine, that their body is powerful and strong and mm -hmm. should be cared for. And like, again, it's that wholeness, right? Like versus, oh, my body is an ornament. My body is something I need you to compliment me on. My body is something I should modify, right? Mm -hmm. Like I shouldn't eat or I must exercise this way. But instead, like, oh, I like to exercise because I like to feel strong because I'm strong in this world. Or you know what I mean? Like, I, I like to exercise because look at my posture. Like, I just can stand in my power. Yes. And so um, so that's really fun. You know, like, uh, so I'm grateful that my mother put me in um, sports. She wasn't an athlete, but I'm, I'm grateful that she saw fit to um, give me that opportunity because that's another way that I know my power, you know, inside out.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. that's definitely a, diff a different awareness, awareness that I know that I had of being able to not only just feel my skin and bones, but also like feel my strength, you know, my physical strength, my, yeah. my mental strength of being able to push myself and or being able to know, you know, what my limits are right now, because, you know, getting into, you know, the whole capacity spill, like what it, you mm -hmm. know, knowing, okay, right now, I need to work up into this point, because this is this is my capacity. And I think that's, that's something that, you know, being in our bodies teaches us. A lot of times we are, you know, so this world has taught us, you know, to focus on other things for escapism, you know, to, to escape this form, escape what we're doing. There's so many, you know, what people, you know, call us distractions from entertainment to work to whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It keeps us away from that awareness to, to knowing when our capacity is. And so that's why we have had yes. the highest rates of heart disease and, and, you know, and cancer and all this other stuff because, and diabetes, because we, we haven't been one privy to, privileged to being able to, you know, know what our capacity is, but also um, really just, just being aware of that, you know, and looking at that in our mothers and in our fathers um, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and seeing ourselves in that as a mirror. So I think that's one thing too, and this this new way, this new world, as I'm gonna call it, is like has called us to really mm -hmm. fill into what that capacity is, you know, day mm -hmm. to day. I talk to you know my clients. I talk to you know anybody um, about not being so not being so rigid and strict about what that is, um, as far as like long term, but really paying attention to that day to day because th things are changing so rapidly, and that also yeah. keeps us from being from escaping right from from us going to the next thing the next thing the next thing we're really paying attention to today what now right now what do i feel like i need today what do i feel like i have capacity for because i swear some days i'm like you know like i could say like yesterday i had the capacity to deal with just enough to get through with that opening <laughs> and i knew it too i was like i got just enough since i came out i gotta get home um and then some days it's like i can go all day all night and some days i'm like i'm not leaving the house and being yeah. and honoring that and honoring that that is the ha hardest thing i just I had to tell um a sister friend who reached out to me and it was like you know i'm just she said i'm just now realizing that i have been holding things in and now i have to i'm learning to release them and you know and she's like that's such a a difficult choice and i was like that's mm -hmm. that's actually she, oh, she said she didn't have to she didn't want to be strong strong anymore or she, you know or whatever and i was like well releasing it choosing to release it is actually the strongest thing you can do because it's easy to mm -hmm. hold on to, to something that we know you know we're comfortable with holding on to keep going you know but actually giving ourselves permission to slow down and to mm -hmm. release it and to cry yeah. or to just whatever say fuck it whatever we need to do in the moment yeah. is just as important just yeah you're right you're right about that and i think that in that way we are um that is how we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. I mean, we say that, but like for real, for real, like in in regard to self care, like we weren't able to do those things that we can do now. Mm -hmm. And so again, we're sort of we're healing, you know, healing forward, right? By reaching back, right, and 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 doing doing for. Um, our ancestors that live in us what we couldn't do and then in turn teaching you know our children that they have those kinds of options and that's that's about like that's multi-dimensional you know i think about the fact that um i think about like what we're doing with mental health now like how we're real explicit like oh yeah i was depressed right yeah i was depressed right or saying to right. each other oh you know you're depressed that's depression that's what that's like or that's a panic attack like we are destigmatizing that um we are becoming aware so we have this this uh, awareness of like what's happening inside of our bodies you know because we can tap into that and then we can do something about that um we can heal right and so yeah i think that um we are ancestors wildest dreams and in regards to capacity again it's about like it's it's amazing to me like I know what you're saying about COVID too. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, yay, COVID, obviously. But because I'm not, I'm furloughed and there's all kinds of shit going on. Right. But, and I should say, and I am so aware 
of my body like never before. Maybe when I was a child, I was this aware. I don't know. Because I look at Indigo, she gets to do a lot of just stuff to herself. Yeah, there's a lot of, she's a lot of time to do stuff here. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but I'm so aware of my capacity. And at this point, I honor my capacity. I'm, I'm because I'm not engaged with these systems that are saying um, you're only as good as yesterday. Mm. Can you do that again today? Because if you can't, like your entire worth is based on what you can sell today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not engaged with um, systems and spaces where I have to keep up. And that's so subtle too. Like it's so subtle. Like what, we're, what, yeah. are, we, what are we keeping up with? What are you keeping up with? You know, I can keep up with myself because I'm tuned in enough to what it is that I need. So Self-care for me can be like one thing I've started doing in, during COVID is baking. Like I've made a key lime pie last week. Ooh. You know, I, I have been making strawberry lemonade cupcakes from scratch, Italian um, cream cake. Like I'm just, and for me, you know, in cooking, I've always cooked. But for me, that's another form of self-care because it's making. It's, 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 you know, ingredients and my hands in this and it's process and it's, beauty and it's sharing and it's all of these things that you know um if I were like in the middle of that rat race I wouldn't have been able to do mm -hmm. nor am I cast into the role of being the person at home that's responsible for doing all the things to take care of the home either it's a choice right you know it's a choice um and so yeah capacity is a is a real thing and mm -hmm. and, and we're often just entirely too distracted to to know what our capacity is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. which is how we end up sick yeah 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 and that's usually when we you know discover it like oh i you know stressed myself out or i was too overwhelmed mm -hmm. you know i'm trying to not even get to that point of overwhelm you know if it, it i want to be able to feel myself in every moment to know oh i'm at capacity let's dial back a little bit and now I, I i love that i'm at this place where i even voice that to other people you know so yeah. i have calls i mean it has been um I've had calls and opportunities come in and now I have to, I have to actually say, you know what, I'm at capacity, you know, I'm, when I, if, if things free up or, you know, I, I gain more capacity in some way, I'll let you know. But right now yeah. it's just, and, and how I do that is that I feel that as soon as somebody asks me, I feel I, how it feels in my body. If I start to lock up, if I, my breath goes away, I know that it's already too much to take on right now. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that, before I didn't pay attention to, I was taking on, I'd be like, okay, it's a challenge. We can do it. We can we can carry all this and keep going. You know, I been thinking about one of the visuals, um, when Alexandra was telling me the other day, I'm calling her and she's out of breath. And I was like, what is going on? So she's like, I'm trying to carry two bags on this hand, another bag on it, because I don't want to make one flight up the stairs. <laughs> and I was like, and that's the stuff that we do. But like, even in our in our world, you know, we are just because we just, we think it's going to be easier at the end if we just yes. you know carry it all and now it's mm -hmm. yeah getting out of that red race has really just been like you know what i'm i'm not today you know not mm -hmm. today maybe not tomorrow mm -hmm. either and not mm -hmm. feeling like like i'm missing something that's, that's also right. a piece like today like even today with you know the whole dentist thing i was like you know what i'm i'm beyond worries at this point i'm beyond worries at the point because i know that if i need it I'm, I'm, it's going to be taken care of, whether yeah. I need it or not, even if I want it, because my desires and my wants are also the same. So if I want yeah. it, whether I need it or if I want it, they're going to come. And so just realizing that and not feeling like I have to work myself to the ground and work myself to the death in order to, to accomplish or to, um, to gain anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just releasing myself from that. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you and it's such a process of unlearning. It's such a process of unlearning. Like, how do you, you know, to get to that place where, again, like, we're just so inundated with these ideas that what we do is who we are, as opposed to we are. Yes. We, we, we just are. And, and, and obviously, we're living in these systems. It's not like we can entirely shake them off. Although that's so appealing at times, you know. Um, but so, yeah, how do we maintain inside of that? And I think one of the things that um, I'm doing is being really gentle with myself um, the way I would with a loved one. 
now more and more. And in fact, I have more capacity to love because of how I'm being gentle with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I have more capacity part. to stop and understand. You know, I have more capacity to stop and not respond. I have more capacity to, to just walk away from a thing, you know, it's it, because I'm caring for myself. And I told you yesterday, I'm very self-centering, mm -hmm. not self-centered, but I'm very self-centering. So if we conflate the two, if someone conflates the two, that's okay. That, that has happened in the past. You're self-centered. No, actually, I'm just really self-centering because who else is going to do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, who else is really going to do it? And it's radical. It's radical, but it really is what is meant by, oh, put your oxygen mask on yes. before you put it on anyone else. I'm self-centering because if I fall down and I'm laid out, you know, what is, what, what's going to happen? What's going to get done? I mean, things will get done, right? But um, I want to be able, I want to have the capacity to do the things that, I, that I'm to do in this world. So I'm very gentle with myself about things. Like I had... I had, like you said, you had um, that feeling of overwhelm, and you know it. Yeah. Again, this is a this is a uh, uh, the fruits of COVID. This is the fruits of time away from the system. Um, I was reading a couple of weeks ago about this unemployment shit, and this you know sick, crazy system we live in that is determined uh, not to take care of folks, to push us back into these whatever myth mythologies they're making up. But I remember being like, oh, shit. I was like, how am I going to pay my bills? And then I just remember the feeling was like, oh, you, first, you need to close that and you need to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You need to close that and you need to get on your yoga mat. You need to close that and you need to eat. You know, like, what can you do to care for yourself right now? Because, you know, going into all of the um, future worrying, Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Is going to take me out of this moment. And um, if I if I need to be present, I need to stay out of the fear space. Right. Mm -hmm. um, again, which is like, again, it's a part of systems. So that's why everyone's just <laughs> it's the fear, you know. Um, so, yeah, just learning so much about about capacity and about like the intelligence of my body and my soul, you know, the intelligence the experience of what it feels to be an integrated being, like to not be torn by the, and you know, and, and things are still real. I still have to figure out how I'm going to pay my bills. Um, but I'm not distraught. Yeah. I'm not distraught. I'm not a week away. Right. I'm here. What can I do with this moment? You know? Oh, oh that is so, I feel that. And I, for myself, I know that is, that is also my medicine of, and that's something I've been real conscious of in the last couple of weeks because I can make up scenarios and probably that's probably my gift as well. But, you know, I, I can make up scenarios from here to next year, 10 years, whatever, forward and back, you know, and, and, and it really does. It takes us out of this present. It takes us out of our body. It takes us out of this present experience of being able to see the signs, hear the answers in the right now instead mm -hmm. of like trying to figure it out. So whenever I do that, I always like another thing I speak to myself a lot. I'm always like, okay, we, we don't have to figure this out. There's nothing mm -hmm. to figure out. We need to just ask the question and wait for the answers. Yeah. And it really is that simple. Mm -hmm. It really is. And it, it just, it's, it's practice, of course, mm -hmm. because the, the more we do it, the faster the answers will come. But we have to catch that, you know, in order to, in order for that to happen. But again, that's yeah. capacity because once we begin to do that, we close the gap on, on, you know, that thing getting here that gives us, That's more. Right. yeah, yeah. And it's just been, mm. it's been that constant, you know what, I don't have to, and now it's like, it's instant. I could, my breath returns to me so much quicker when I, when I do that, you know, I don't, I don't have to figure mm. it out say right now. Okay. What is the problem? I can state the problem, release it. Yeah. And then, you know, know that it's going to be taken care of. And this is, yeah. and it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just divine, you know, and again, I, I, you know, when I hear, you know, you were talking about our ancestors' wildest dreams, and I think that's something else as well of, of that I'm just so grateful of knowing that I can, I can harness that power, their power, you know, the divine power, the I am power, you know, my power all, all in it, you know, and mm -hmm. that's that in itself, talk about capacity, 
Yeah. <laughs> Strength. Oh. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it, that's where the alchemy happens. That's where, you know, that's where the medicine is. That's where the magic is. It seems like a miracle, but it's really just being steeped, deeply steeped in that place. Um, so I, I don't know if I told you, but I made this prayer at the beginning of COVID. I was actually on the way to Asheville to get my puppy, my second puppy. And um, I was driving with my girls and I was listening to um, this uh, Franciscan friar, Richard Rory. He's one of my favorite speakers. I like the way he talks about uh, non-duality. And I came up with this prayer. It's, you know, in a time such as this, when we want to either um, blame or to fix, may I know radical trust, infinite hope, mm -hmm. and the promise of a new earth. And like that is so succinct. Ooh. It is so succinct and it's so it though. It's like all that I, it, it's all that I need. You yes. Not to fix, not to blame, but to have this infinite trust, this radical hope, this infinite trust and, and know that the promise of a new earth is in there. Like it's not even, I don't need to see or know how it's going to work anymore. Like that's the thing. And that's where I used to be, you know, um, getting in my own way. It's like the co-creation is what happens when the divine meets that radical, that radical trust or that radical hope and that infinite trust, you know, that, that, uh, that I am, right? That you can't even, there aren't even words for it. I have chills. There aren't even words for it because it's just that rich and experiential, right? So it's like, I, I don't know what it looks like, but I know that the divine will always meet me there and it'll be it'll be some it'll be grander than I could have exactly. imagined on my own. <laughs> exactly. Always. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's the that's the miracle. Um and that's what I um when I pray with Inana at night, she will not let me go to bed without a prayer. Oh beautiful. Our prayers are may I. Our prayers are reminders of agency and reminders of affirmation. So she'll say may I, you know, I'll say may we may you know is a it, it's this acknowledging like that we may mm -hmm. you know that with the divine we of course we may of course we may have deep restorative sleep and wake up and have a beautiful morning together like speaking mm -hmm. those things in emotion but getting her to know the divine in that way like the divine will meet you it's not about asking for favors necessarily the divine will meet you do what you do what you do put your cards out line your crystals up burn your sage, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. You know, cultivate, curate your beauty the way, you, and then just just know that the divine's gonna meet you in that. But but to really teach her how to do that, you know, without, uh, oh God, would you please just give me, you know, to know that, to really know that we have agency and choice in how we weather um, the not knowing. Yes. You know, how we stand in the not knowing, how we trust in the not knowing. Like that, oof. that self care. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's also something that's been coming up. So that's one of the faculties and the comedic principles is about knowing that um, that we have divine forces that are taking care of that which we don't know. Because again, like our only our, our mind can only calculate based upon our experiences you know, cumulatively. So we can't, we can't figure out the details to, that, that everything else is co-creating for. So knowing that and really affirming. So I love to hear that prayer of may I, I that is so beautiful. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that one. <laughs> that is my tea for today. Yes. I love yeah. that. I'm going to take that one. So affirmations is really, 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 it's powerful. It's powerful. Anything mm -hmm. in the in the I am and the in the in the may I is is already giving it power mm -hmm. to go forth and to come and to return back to you. Mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. And to trust that whoever we collaborate with and we're connected to will also be able to do that very same thing. Yes. You know, it, it's trusting that too, like that we are in we are in a world in community with others who we can trust that also in this unknown kind of time, this space, this liminal space that we're in, that we can trust that they can also be in that same space yes. where the divine meets them in co-creation, right? To trust that for them as well. 
-hmm. especially if they're connected to us too, right? Like it's a part of that. It's not just like you're, you know, it's, I'm just thinking about like co-parent, you know what I mean? Like to trust that they will also be able to have what they have, mm -hmm. that's what they need, right? In order to galvanize whatever resources we need, Yes. you know? It, it's that, it's that that's too. Beautiful. And that and that has to come from a, a place of deep understanding and also surrendering, you know, external yeah. surrendering and understanding that, um, yes, we don't, we don't need to have all of the answers and all the pieces because that's why we have sisterhood. That's why we have brotherhood. That's why we have community. That's why we have whatever, you know, that and, and calling and again, affirming that the whatever I can't figure out what I'm not mm -hmm. going to figure out is going to come and it's going to, you know, it's going to show up, you know, mm -hmm. in someone else, <laughs> however it may. Yes. So yeah. love, we only have, we have five more minutes. I want you to get into a little bit about what you do, who you are, how people can reach out to you. So what I've done for the last 20 years is what we did yesterday, makeup. Yeah. <laughs> that just happened to be what we did. Obviously, we do <laughs> other things together, you know, you and I. But um, so that's what I've done for the last 20 years. I worked um, in the luxury retail sector. I did um, some field training and do weddings. I still do weddings. I have uh, two coming up, actually, in the next few weeks. Um, but I'm moving into – and so extracurricularly, I've done my, my purpose work, yeah. which is – um, what I like to call social alchemy, you know, and that is um, really recognizing that in this now that we all have within us the capacity to create this change together. Um, so, yeah, I find myself really, um, I facilitate interpersonal dialogue around um, matters of social justice, racial justice, um, healing. Um, I'm in grad schools. So I'm studying um, women and gender and spirituality and social justice. Um, and really just, it's just really the most rich thing that I've done thus far. And I love that about life. Like there's always, whenever I'm in it, it's, it's a rich thing, you know, and this is so rich. Um, and it's informing so much of my work. I don't even know, again, it's that co I don't even know what's at the end of it, but I know what I'm in the middle of making right now. Yeah. And so what I'm in the middle of making right now, um, I have all of these stickies of all my potential jobs or the jobs that are coming in a little bit. Yes. <laughs> so I've got workshops. I've got um, some groups that I'm going to be, um, some adult education that I'll be doing around racial justice. Um, so I'm working with like community groups, church groups. Um, I have the amazing project I'm working on uh, that you're going to also be a part of with a bunch of um, folks around mindfulness and yoga and race and healing. Um, and reparations, essentially, you know, um, and uh, what else is going on? And I'm so I'm consulting. I'm consulting, but it's just really I'm 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 in this place of um, it's new territory. This this being furloughed, obviously, but also this every day going in to create my work, yeah. every day showing up for like this new. So there's lots of learning curves. There's lots of incredible conversations I'm having with people. Um, it's an exciting time, and it's a time, and now, I, like I said, I realize how unsustainable before it was, um, and how important it is to figure out how to live this. And it's so much of figuring it out is just living, like really just knowing it in my body and my bones, what it's like to, like, you get up every day and no one's up but you and the puppy, you know, and I can, I can come in here and burn my sage and, and do my spread and just drink my coffee, um, and then, you know, Inanna trickles in, and it's the two of us, and then, you know, and, and just, like, um, sort of leaning into the shape of the day and being able to create my work as opposed to panic attacking, you know, to a job, spending 10 hours away from my family, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to, you know, it's that I can really um, midwife the healing that, um, that I, too, am a part of. You know, it's my favorite thing to do is to do this, is to connect. My favorite thing to do is connect. Um, my favorite thing to do is to learn, right? To take your words inside of me. Um, and in a time such as this, like I really, I just feel very fortunate to um, study what I study and know what I know and be able to bring that to the work of um, healing justice and racial justice and social justice and waking up and, and just really um, making what we can together. Beautiful. So I know that's kind of like 
abstract, but hopefully you have a sense of what I'm, what I'm doing. Yes, yes. Well, yes. Much love to you, sister. Always, always. Thank you. Always love. So good. Been talking with you. Love you. And I will talk to you soon. Love you too. Follow and support. See you all next week. Peace, love.